Hello and welcome back to our video series. Today we will finally compute the solution for our model. In our previous video we created a model instance and added input data in the form of surface points and orientations. By setting the structural frame we defined the relationships between our structural elements. Now we are ready to compute the solution for our model. So what does this involve? When computing a solution, Gempy will perform several steps. It will create a universal co creating function for each structural group. It will then evaluate the value of continuous scalar field based on this function at each point of the defined grid and map it to the corresponding structural element. Finally, the result for all structural groups will be combined based on the relationships defined in the structural frame using masking operations. There are advanced interpolation options that adjust the underlying co creating interpolation. Unless you are experienced, we recommend you stick with the default settings. In our example, we can see the results of these computations. Our model has two structural groups, so two scalar fields are computed. Here is the scalar field for strat series 2, the younger horizontal group, and here is the scalar field for the underlying strat series 1. In the final model, continuous scalar values are mapped to the corresponding structural elements, with relationships enforced. In our case, ROC2 overlies ROC1 conformably, while ROC3 erodes the underlying elements, forming an unconformity. Recall that we set the bottom relation of strat series 2 to erode. Depending on your settings, the complexity and the resolution of your model, computation may take some time. That already looks quite nice, but no worries, we will explore more visualization options in the next videos. Before we wrap up, let's also take a look where and how the results are stored. All the components of our solution can be accessed using attributes of our model instance. Let's go through the most important ones. Geomodel.solutions.rawarrays.lithblock contains the corresponding structural elements by ID. Geomodel.grid.regularGrid.values contains the coordinates of our grid points. Geomodel.solutions.rawarrays.scalarFieldMatrix contains the corresponding scalar field values for each structural group separately. Note that during computation, Gempy will also generate surface meshes for 3D representation. We will take a look at these in an upcoming video on 3D visualization. As usual, we hope you found this tutorial helpful. If so, leave a like on this video or maybe even stop by GitHub and grant Jampai a star rating. Are there any topics you would like us to cover? Make sure to leave a comment. By subscribing, you make sure to miss no informative Jampai videos in the future. See you in the next video.